All right, guys, I'm gonna make a real quick video for you. Uh, sorry, my phone's so messed up, but I'm gonna show you how to modify these motors real quick. Um, so you can see here, we got a modified one. So it just goes a little bit further back where it's flat. And then we got an unmodified one here. As you can see, let me rotate that. As you can see, it's a lot longer on the modified one here. So how we are measuring that is uh, the spacer that goes on the motor here. We're cutting that down to about half an inch. Um, mine's a little bit over that. You can do that however you want. I'm going to show you how I've been doing it real quick. Um, I've been doing it in a... I can't even think what it's called. Belt sander. All right, here we go. Then going over here to the belt sander and just... Um, that's the easy way to do it if you have a belt sander you could use anything else you could use a sawzall something like that i usually actually use the mill to do it but uh obviously that most people don't have that um so you just want to shave that down and that'll show you where you need to be um, another easy way to measure it is it's about half as thick as a piece of electrical tape uh, so what i've been doing here is set up this camera for you if it would set up. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a piece of electrical tape, not very long. We're just gonna rip that in half. If you wanna be real precise, you can cut it in half, but. Um, it doesn't need to be real precise, just your spacer needs to be precise on the back because that will uh, make sure that your sprocket is aligned. So we're gonna take our piece of tape here and we're just gonna wrap it around and that will tell us where we need to be at. Now there's multiple different ways you could uh, take that down. Uh, obviously the best way would be to stick it in a mill and use an end mill. You could also use a little whizzer like this. Any piece of sandpaper like and just Smooth that down. You want to get it really even and you want to make sure that the sprocket slides across where you flattened it. Um, I got one here. An even easier way if you don't have a wizard or something like that. Let me find what I was using. Um, just take a, a file. You can use any file. I've been trying to use kind of smaller ones like this though. About the, the size of the shaft. And if you have a vise, I like to stick it in the vise with the key flat. And then you just keep this flat. And then you will actually notice that, sorry, my camera is so terrible. You're not really going to see much. But you can see how there's a little groove right there. You can actually just keep your file there and just keep filing it until it's flat. Definitely take some time to do it this way, but you can see I almost have it. But uh, you want it to be really smooth, like this one is, and you want the sprocket to slide on there real smoothly. And then after the sprocket, you're gonna need some washers. Uh, these are 10 millimeter inner diameter by 20 millimeter outer diameter. You might want to go smaller actually, I'm not sure. But you want to be able to fit three or four of them and then put your lock washer. And this is reverse threaded. So you gotta spin it to the left. And there you go. Now it'll bolt right up. And whenever you bolt it up, you might have to stack some washers right here in this space. 
in between the motor and the fork because uh, that'll drop the motor down and release tension some. But other than that, it'll bolt right up in.